I cannot believe it's been nine years since she was diagnosed. And like most MLD kids and like a lot of ultra rare kids, um, you know, it was uh, kind of an arduous process, but in the end it happened very quickly. Um, she was, you know, showing delays. She was slow to talk. Um, she was, she was walking seemingly on schedule, but she had gait issues and we had an IEP, you know, and we had therapists in and out of the house. None of us are thinking genetic disorder. We had two older unaffected kids and, you know, we, I had had her when I was 42. So I'm not thinking genetic disorder at all. And then, um, she started falling. And I remember my husband called out and said, you know, Kyle just fell down. She can't get up the stairs. And so we, you know, lived in denial for no, another couple of weeks. We're like, oh, you know, it's got to be her ears because she'd had ear tube surgery. And we took her to the ENT, really good guy. And it had taken months to see him. And he said, it's not her ears. And if I were you, I'd see a neurologist right away. And that's when everything just sort of starts spinning out of control. And she was diagnosed within 48 hours at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. They did the MRI. They see the demyelination. Um, and, you know, I remember, I always tell this story, like I was praying for it not to be a, a brain tumor. And when you learn about this disease, like metachromatic leukodystrophy, you're thinking, I wish it was a brain tumor. I mean, I'm actually jealous of people whose kids get to work with a pediatric oncologist. And, um, you know, it's, it was just amazing. It was just amazing. Uh, and so it's been nine years. Um, her life expectancy was predicted to be three and a half years after symptom onset. It is six years. Um, it really is a testament to her team at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She is defying the odds. And, you know, so we have learned to, to live with this diagnosis now for, gosh, now nine years. And, and it's amazing what you can get used to.